Hi everyone, nice to meet you. My name's Emma and thank you in advance for watching this video. I'm gonna throw this out there right away that this story has talk about paranormal experiences and Ouija boards. If you spook kind of easily and don't like talk about Ouija boards or paranormal experiences that may or may not be true, may or may not look like or be like what it looks like, <laughs> then please click out now because I'm about to tell you a story of my past that might scare you. Let's jump right into it. <laughs> so a little backstory on myself. I don't necessarily know if I believe in ghosts or not, even though I had this experience. I think like my heart and soul tells me to not believe in it because there has to be some other explanation there could be some other explanation, and it's never been proven to be true or real. It's just something that people are very interested in. Sometimes something looks like some one thing, and then it turns out to be another. So part of me is still skeptical, even though after I've seen this, but the reason I'm not fully a skeptic is because this story scared the living crap out of me for a really long time, and I, I don't know how else I would explain it. And like, I saw it with my own eyes. I don't know, when you see something that seems to be paranormal, it is very hard to close it away from your life, shut that chapter, and pretend it never happened. Because of what happened, there is another side to me that says, um, don't mess around, <laughs> that this is real, and if this is real, anything can be real. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. I'm conflicted. I don't know if I believe or not. For me to tell you the story, I think I need to go a little bit further back and talk about my mom. Throughout growing up, my mom has told my siblings and I a little story. <laughs> so this little story starts with a little girl. This girl looked to be about seven or eight years old and she was not alive. So my mom would see this little girl on the regular. Um, for a long period of time, like years throughout her life. I don't know when she started. I don't know my mom's first sighting appearance of her. I don't remember if she ever told me if she, I don't know. But anyways, um, this little girl would watch my mom. She would just sit at the top of the stairs or stand somewhere and just watch her. Uh, my mom said that she didn't have any bad energy or bad feelings about this girl, that she just seemed like your typical kid who was playful and likes to keep an eye on you. So my mom was fine with it, <laughs> like just brave as hell. <laughs> and um, my mom said she got so used to it that she would just continue doing what she was doing and let her follow. I'm pretty sure my mom tried to talk to her a few times and there was nothing, no response or anything. So she just let it go and just let this girl watch her, which <laughs> like what? <laughs> so this little girl would do a few things to my mom over the years. She would play little tricks on her, specifically hiding things. One experience in um, specific that my mom told us is that my mom was looking high and low throughout the house for her car keys because she couldn't find them anywhere um, and she checked all the places that she would put them herself that she thought she would um, she just checked like obvious places too and she couldn't find them anywhere and yeah so I think she just went about her day and like used her spare key or whatever anyways one day she came across her car keys yet they were wrapped into a tea towel. Like the tea towel was folded and the keys were in the center of it in our little like kitchen trolley that had our towels and stuff, which is really weird. I mean, there could be some sort of explanation. It could have been one of us kids playing a joke and we just didn't confess to it. <laughs> and it could have been accidentally folded in, I guess, which, I mean, <laughs> you decide. It could have been, like, I'm not saying it's not. But my mom said that in her heart, like, she just knew it was this girl because she had known her tricks. She had known what this girl liked to do for fun and was used to her by now. So she knew right away, like, it was her. My mom was still not afraid. And, uh, so I guess throughout, like, this time my dad hadn't ever seen her and nobody else had, so who knows if she's telling the truth, you know, that kind of thing. But this all changed. So my... Mom and Dad were sitting at the dinner table one night, late at night, and I don't even know if I was born yet or if I was just a little kid, but my older sister was probably about seven or eight at the time. And when we went to bed, we would always wear 90s, <laughs> those PJ dresses that were super cute. So my parents told us they were sitting at this table 
and they heard something like a creak and it made them look up at the stairs, which you could see from our dining room table. They looked up at the stairs and they saw a girl standing there watching them. And their first thought was it was my sister because this girl was wearing a white dress. And then, but I guess as they actually looked at her, they realized it wasn't my sister. And my mom knew automatically who it was. It was the girl and she told my dad, but my dad was scared shitless. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> and uh, yeah, like that girl just watched them for a little bit and then left, which is really freaky. I. I don't know, I'd be scared and I don't know why she finally chose to show herself to someone other than my mom, but she did. And okay, little backstory on my dad, he's like this big tough skeptical man. <laughs> you would never expect something like this to come out of his mouth. So this is another reason that I'm kind of like, mm, what the fuck did they see? <laughs> um, anyways, sorry. So another experience that they shared together was they were sleeping in bed together in the middle of the night and you know what kids do like occasionally you'll go crawl into bed with your parents when you're scared or you just want you're lonely or whatever so it's totally normal my dad told me this <laughs> so in the middle of the night my mom and him both woke up at the exact same time because they said that it felt like one of us kids had ran and jumped into bed with them right in between them <laughs> like a hard jump <laughs> and when they both woke up nobody was there like, that would be terrifying. Not just one person, but two people woke up for that reason. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, like, if this little girl was actually there, I don't know how my mom stayed so calm. Because, I, like, I, I would freeze and probably cry later. <laughs> I'd be so scared. Yeah. So, along with that, um, with my dad's job, we got posted a lot and moved around. And my mom told us that no matter where we moved, even if it was across the country, when she's found that this little girl appears. So she follows. <laughs> my dog. Okay, she wants to come in. I'm back. Hi. You're Slobbery. Hello, friend. This is Missy. <laughs> back to the story. However, every time we moved, it took longer for that period because this girl would follow, but there would be a period of time where she wasn't around and then she'd appear again and she'd be there for good or whatever. And after every single time we moved, apparently that period grew and grew and grew. Like it was taking longer for that girl to follow us or something. I don't know. The last big move we had to make because of my dad's job was our move to Ottawa. And I was about 10 years old at the time. And... Um, my mom said that this girl did show up to that house after a few months and uh, my sister's boyfriend moved with us at the time and he was so skeptical of ghosts and all these stories my mom was telling us and he was talking about it one night and my mom was like no no like you have to believe me this is real <laughs> I mean like I understand why you're skeptical anyways and he was like there's no way I don't remember this but some of my siblings do too in the middle of the night, all of our electronics turned on, including radios, TV, our GameCube, and uh, just started blaring, <laughs> which is really freaky. It was the night right after they were all having this huge discussion about him not believing in the ghost. My mom said it was her. <laughs> she didn't like being, um, she didn't like that he didn't believe in her, <laughs> so she wanted to play a little trick and give him a scare, which is like evil. <laughs> Even for a kid, like, come on. I think he safe to say he believed from then on. And my mom said, typical girl, like, that's typical of her. She doesn't like to be doubted. And doesn't like, and she loves to play tricks on people. I hope I'm telling this story right. I hope this isn't confusing, because I'm kind of, like, scrambled brained. I'm still nervous in front of a camera. And telling this story even makes me nervous sometimes, because so many people don't believe it <laughs> and I don't blame them but at the same time fuck that I don't care it happened <laughs> I can't remember aside from that if there was many more instances in that house specifically um I think my mom might have seen her a few times because my mom did say that she followed us to that house and then she hasn't seen her you know what actually I think she did follow us to one more house it was like this creepy old house too so thanks for that <laughs> but 
then my mom hasn't seen her since. Anyways, my story comes into play. I moved to Ottawa after all the electronics turned on. I was a preteen. I think I was around 12 or 13. And um, I was going through my stuff, like going through some shit. <laughs> and I misbehaved a lot. Didn't treat my mom great all the time. And uh, yeah, very mischievous and rebellious. Didn't like to be told what to do. And I have a theory linked to that, that maybe this spirit came into my life specifically because I pissed off my mom <laughs> and that pissed her off. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so anyways, so I had a friend over and she can vouch for this story. <laughs> I had a friend over and I used to take a lot of pictures. I still do. I love pictures, but even like especially around this age, I had my little camera, a small little one, and my friends and I we used to take pictures all the time of whatever. And um, so I was sitting my bed was here, I was sitting with my back to my bed, and my friend was sitting right across from me against our, my wall, and we were just talking, doing whatever, and I had my camera on. So I had my camera on, I'm going to show you, <laughs> and I was just kind of sitting with my knees here, my hands here, and my camera on like this. So my camera was right here, and it was facing under my bed. Under my bed. We decide we're done what we're doing or we're like we want to go do something or whatever so I stand up and I accidentally push the shutter button on my camera and take a picture <laughs> so so I stand up to go look at my camera and delete whatever picture I just took because <laughs> it was an accident and then I looked at it and I freaked the fuck out <laughs> I remember I showed my friend, I like freaked out, ran to the other side of the room and like faced my bed instead of being back to my bed, like instead of having my back against my bed. I showed my friend the picture and she started crying, went home that night, she was supposed to sleep over, instead she called her parents, told them that she was freaked out, she went home, left me there, <laughs> and um, I like, my parents were home too or something, so I ran downstairs, I showed them the picture, show, told them what happened, and like, immediately they were like, what the hell? Like, what is that? They were super interested and intrigued, okay? I was freaked out. <laughs> I was not intrigued. I didn't think it was cool. I was young, and like, that scared the fuck out of me. So in this picture, there was the top of my bed, the side of my body, and behind my body, under the bed, was a girl. Under my bed. And this picture is kind of blurry, but it looked like she was down like this, staring at the camera. To the left, no, it would have been to the right, to, to the like far left from me, and to the right of the frame of the camera. Oh, my eyes are watering, <laughs> like this shit freaks me out. <laughs> um, at the bottom of the frame, to the right of it, there was this messed up, like, demon looking dog in the frame as well. Like, he looked like he was ready to pounce, ready to kill, like, teeth shown and everything. Freakiest thing in my life. Like, no wonder I was so panicked. No wonder my friend cried. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was so scary. Um, after that, like, we tried to do everything we could to explain the picture. So, like I said, it was blurry. So, her eyes were kind of bouquet, you know, like that fuzzy um and the color was just kind of like fuzzy but she had blue eyes and brown hair but like even though everything was fuzzy you could see her features you could see she had a mouth a nose like it was a girl <laughs> just like the scariest thing in my life anyway so uh, we tried everything we could to explain what it was we I had this necklace at the time that had blue beads on it so we're like, oh, maybe that's her eyes. I wasn't even wearing the necklace, but like we were trying to figure out everything we could to show this, like to um, explain this picture so that I wasn't as freaked out as I was. <laughs> um, we tried to recreate the picture, see if my hair mixed with some other things made it look like it did, even though there was no explanation for that dog thing. Um, and like nothing would work. I didn't sleep in my room for about a month. 
I refused. I continuously slept in my sister's bed in her room because I didn't want to be alone and didn't want to be in that room, obviously. And it came to the point where she had to force me to go back to my room, which was so mean. <laughs> like, I was terrified. And then I ended up sleeping back in my room and I kind of got over it. Like, I was still scared, probably super scared for the first little bit, but kind of got over it because nothing else was happening. But we took that picture and brought it to my friend's house and we showed her parents. So their idea was we're going to put it on the computer, we're going to blow it up so we can see what's going on and see if maybe like it really is just some objects under my bed even though there was nothing there to make that face, you know? Um, we blew it up and them as well, like they're like looking at each other, <laughs> don't want to freak me and my friend out more, but I mean, like there's no explanation. Side note, the shitty thing is, I don't have the picture anymore, which I wish I did so bad because I tell this story to people and I wish I had a photo to prove for it or I wish I could at least look at it now that I'm older, see if maybe I can figure something out now. Um, but I don't have it anymore, I have no clue what happened to it, which is also kind of weird. I think, like I know I put it, blew it up on her parents' computer, so I asked her not long ago well, maybe like a year ago, I asked her about it and told, asked her if she could um, send it to me if she still had it. Wasn't there. I don't know what happened to the memory card. And like, <laughs> just the other day, I was scrolling through my emails to see if maybe I sent it to someone because I was young and just used email then. See if I could find it. But like, I can't find it. There's nowhere to be found. The only proof I can give you, which isn't even technically proof, but... My family and I, we have a group chat on Facebook, and I'll show you me asking them if they knew where the picture was. I don't know if you can read that well. I don't know if you can see that well. But I said, but I pretty much asked them, I said, I wish I still had my ghost picture. I'm making a YouTube video on it. And then my sister said, lol, it's probably in the group message if you go far back enough. I said, I don't think so. This was when I was like 12. Plus, we've had a few different group messages. Plus, I haven't seen it in years, I think. And then my brother said, yeah, I think we tried to find it a while ago. And I said, did we find it? And then they ignored me. Family life. <laughs> still to this day, when we talk about it, nobody in my family has any explanation. They all still say it's freaky. Um, and yeah, basically they thought I was possessed <laughs> and screwed. And they didn't care. <laughs> so that's nice. Um, Anyways, so yeah, after that picture, I don't really know what happened after that, how I got over it or whatever. I do remember a little bit after that, like a while after that. I would say this picture actually probably happened when I was like 11. And then I started doing Ouija board when I was like 12, turning 13, and then 13, and maybe 14 too. Um, anyways, so Ouija board. I decided to do the Ouija board with my friends at my house a bunch. Um, dumb decision, I know. <laughs> we decided to do the Ouija board, and there was three of us there, so myself and two other friends. Um, we would come home after school and hang out and go straight to the Ouija board all the time because we, we had results, we thought stuff was happening, and it was so intriguing and, like, addicting. Now, I know it could have been one of my friends fucking with me. There's a huge chance, but I don't know. We, all three of us kept coming back time and time again. It wasn't like a one and done joke, you know? So we did the Ouija board. We did the Ouija board in my basement one time and it was really dark. We did it in our like boiler room. Is that what it'd be called with our furnace and everything? Um, and yeah, like this creepy unfinished cobweb filled room. <laughs> and we did it kind of like a seance. We circled the Ouija board with lit candles. I don't know why I was allowed to do this. <laughs> and then turned all the lights off, did a little like entry trance kind of thing, and then stuff would happen. I think that was one of the first times we did it. While we were doing it, my mom has the audacity <laughs> to flicker the lights. <laughs> so while we were sitting there all in our freaking zone, scared as heck already, <laughs> my mom decides, because. We had a light switch outside of the room as well that worked. She decides to sneak down the stairs so we don't hear her and flicker them. <laughs> that jerk. <laughs> so that freaked us out, but she immediately told us after that it was her and like laughed and told everybody. Blah, blah, blah. 
Anyway, so that was funny. It was fine. But we continued doing the Ouija board. So we did it upstairs in my parents, my mom's room at the time. And we did it in my room. Dumbass decision. <laughs> yeah, we got quite a few responses on the Ouija board. Um, there was a few things said, too, that were, like... I didn't tell my friends at the time about this. They could have been guessing because they knew about the guy. Um, but like one thing it said, it, it spelt out that I needed to tell my friends a secret and I was keeping it from them. And then it spelt out this person's last name, which I did have a secret about <laughs> that involved me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that was weird. And then um, I think one of the last times we did it is when it said the Ouija board told us that we were connecting with the girl from the picture. And this girl, the, my friend asked where it lives, said it lives in my closet. <laughs> and then my friend asked if it likes me, it said no, ha ha ha. <laughs> like what the heck? And um, yeah, it was freaky. And oh my god, it's just all coming back to me now. When we do the Ouija board, like I said, it could have been one of my friends. I'm sorry I keep repeating this, but I'm skeptical myself, even though, like, uh, I'm back and forth. I don't know. When we would do it, we'd had our fingers on the planchette, and it would go from H, A, H, A, H, A, H, A, H, A, H, A, super fast. Ha, 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 ha. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> How scary is that? It's laughing at us. And then it would also go to six, 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 six. And then we would end it and like leave it alone for a bit. Freaked out as hell. Um, but yeah, so one time it told me that this little girl that was under my bed does not like me and lives in my closet. So my theory why she appeared and doesn't like me kind of makes sense to me because I was shit to my mom. Um, but then I talked to my mom later down the road and I was like, is this the same girl? Like, do you recognize her? And my mom said she didn't think it was the same girl at all. <laughs> I think she said the eyes were a little bit of a different color. Um, and this girl looked like she had bad energy and was evil. Because she had like a little demon dog with her. Her little partner, buddy, partner in crime. <laughs> trying to scare me. Um, yeah, so... I don't know what happened. I, nothing has happened since. I haven't seen anybody since. But I've also haven't talked about it in a long time tried to like ignore ghosts and all that for a while just because I don't know what's gonna happen and it freaks me out a little bit however with that whole experience I still don't know if I believe in ghosts or if that was still something that could have been explained easily and I just missed the explanation but did we all miss the explanation anyways that's my ghost story thank you for watching and if you don't hear from me ever again you know who did it Okay? Thank you! <laughs> Bye! <laughs>